All right, capnography video number two. And what we're going to be talking about in this video is, is another one of the negative side effects of overbreathing, of getting rid of too much carbon dioxide. We don't want to think of carbon dioxide as a bad gas. It's a very valuable gas and it regulates a lot of our blood chemistry and it is, and it is absolutely vital that the, the levels of carbon dioxide are in the right zone. Because one of the effects of having the pH go too high, that means too alkali, I know this sounds like high school chemistry, but if there's not enough acid, the blood becomes too alkali, we get changes in another blood gas, nitrous oxide, and what that leads to is widespread constriction of the smooth muscle. Now, you may not have ever heard of smooth muscle before. Smooth muscle lines every sort of inch of our digestive tract. So our stomach and intestines, small intestines, even the bowel and bladder are lined with smooth muscle. So, you know, the, those athletes that, you know, they, they are always on the toilet before the race, you know, and they might be there because the way they're breathing is making their blood to alkali and causing a lot of constriction of the smooth muscle, okay? Now, aside from having to spend your whole pre-race routine on the toilet, there are other negative side effects as far as performance are concerned to having not enough carbon dioxide in your blood, okay? Smooth muscle also lines all of the arteries in your body. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get a constriction in the arteries, okay? So you're going to get a decreased blood flow to the muscles and to the brain. Now think about what we talked about in the first video. When the blood is too alkali, you also get a decreased release of oxygen, okay? And so for your muscles, they're getting considerably less blood to them because the blood vessels that enter them are constricted. And then when the blood arrives there, it's not efficiently releasing its oxygen anyway. So you can get dramatic drops in performance. And the other thing that you got to think about is this, I, I really believe this is what happens to athletes that on game day they just don't have it. And physically they're there, they, they, they're peaked in every, every other way, but all of a sudden it's just not there. Well, the brain is very, very, very um, fussy, let's say, about how much oxygen it gets. And, um, you know, if you were to follow an athlete on his gold medal performance day or what should be his gold medal performance day and just lightly choke him for the entire day, he's not going to have a good day, right? The brain has a very specific requirement for oxygen and when it goes down, immediately your ability to concentrate suffers, okay? You know, outside of athletics, think about the poor kid who knows in the material on the exam inside and out but the stress of the exam gets to him and he blanks and he literally can't think. Or someone who gets stage fright and just is speaking in a group of public and just can't think of anything. This is part of what's driving that, okay? So what we want to be conscientious of is the way that we're breathing, not only while we're on the bike, but leading up to the start of any event, okay? And at rest, because that's where a lot of these blood gas issues get um, off on the wrong foot to begin with, okay? Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about another factor for cycling, and it has to do with how the way we breathe off the bike dramatically affects our performance on the bike, okay? And it's going to talk about lactic acid as well, all right? So, stay tuned.